Hello and welcome to my talk on building an IoT weather station. My name is Jeffrey Rowe. I'm a member here in TOG and also involved with the Young Engineer Society in Engineers Ireland. So one of the problems we face is there are only 26 Metairn weather stations and more importantly there isn't one in my back garden. So I was really interested during the first lockdown as to where I could pull local data from and if possible create that data myself. So after searching around the internet and going over various different kits I came across this this one from DF Robot which had a nice happy medium where they provide the hardware and a basic controller and you had to write the software. So it's very different from the commercially available units where it's a sealed unit, the data gets uploaded to some proprietary website and you either have to pay or have very limited access to the data. I wanted to build all the software myself and have access to the raw data. So in this particular kit, it has units to measure wind speed, wind direction, it has a rain bucket, you can pick up the temperature, the humidity, the atmospheric pressure, and then all that's pulled together in a sensor board. So here on the website yesterday, it costs $138. I think I got mine for about 120 plus shipping uh, at the time. So I ordered that during the first lockdown, but due to this crazy situation and no flights and disruptions in the whole supply chain, I ended up didn't get it until very much late summer. So here are all the parts uh, on my desk. You can see it all goes together with screws and bolts. Uh, even without uh, instructions, it was pretty straightforward to put together. Most things were uh, keyed, so you can only put them uh, in one way. The units themselves are kind of fairly robust plastic. It all goes together on a kind of stainless steel tube. And uh, some of the wires are daisy chains. And it's very easy kind of snap together uh, sort of construction. So it only took about a half an hour to pull all that together. And next it was to look at some software, how to get the data and how to interact with it. So the board on the left is what comes with the weather station. So it has uh, old style telephone connectors uh, up at the top that pulls in the data from the sensors. And then on the board itself, it has its temperature sensor, humidity sensor, and air pressure. It takes in five volts to power it, but unfortunately it has no communication, uh, wireless communication on board. So there's no way to get the data to the internet on that board alone. It will just spit out the data over serial. So that's where the board on the right comes in. It's a node MCU. It's a cheap $3 board that allows us to upload the data to the, to the internet and do all sorts of the communication. But the board on the left uses five volt logic and the node MCU on the right uses 3.3 volt logic. Unfortunately, those two don't mix. And that's why we have the device in the middle, which is a logic level shifter. So it will do the shifting between three uh, volts and five volts. It's bi-directional, so that way we can have a great uh, serial link between the two devices to exchange the information. And we have a great board where we can uh, write it in the Android, in the Arduino uh, development environment and be able to get our data to the internet. So next up was dealing with the software. So the first thing I did was downloaded the example provided on the manufacturing website. So that provided a, a method to pull all the data uh, that comes in over a serial link and then print it to the screen. So on the screen on the right, you can see the wind direction, average wind speed, max wind speed, the rainfall, and all the other stuff that comes from the weather station itself. So the member of the board on the left sends all this data over to our node MCU and we're printing it out here uh, on the screen. It takes data readings every minute. So the first thing I did to modify the sample code was to add uh, over the air updates functionality. So this would allow me when the device is installed outside that if I need to do a software change, all I have to do is take out my laptop, connect to the same Wi-Fi network and uh, wirelessly update any software that's running on my weather station. I don't have to go and take it down, pull out a USB cable, try and connect it into the microcontroller. It's all done over the air wirelessly. Then the next step was getting the data to the internet. So I, I used this platform called uh, OpenSenseMap. 
I used it for another project in measuring air quality, so I was quite familiar with it. It allows you to upload all sorts of sensor data to their website through an easy to use uh, API. It's all free. You can download your data at any time in CSV file format. It allows you then to share the data with uh, anyone in the world. It has a great uh, web interface where you can click, look at your data, and there's plenty of apps that pull data from this particular source. So you can then view it on your phone uh, nice and easy. So I upload to this website uh, once a minute uh, because I don't want to overload the website with too much uh, nonsense data. There's no real point in checking the temperature every second, every minute uh, is just fine enough. So that was all the coding done. Next step came to the installation. So I'm not very good at uh, DIY or hardware, uh, that sort of hardware myself. So I got my brother to help me out. So we have an old extension at the uh, back of our house. So on that wall, we put up a wooden plate and then uh, a wooden pole so on the place there on the photo on the right you can see uh, waterproof kind of uh, electrical junction boxes and that's where i put all my weather station uh, boards that you that i talked about before and on the left i decided to install uh, air quality monitoring station uh, while i was at it so it gets power through a USB cable fed uh, through the vent uh, on the other side, on the other wall, and that's fed around into the unit. And then it has cables going up the wooden pole uh, into the weather uh, sensors uh, themselves. So here is a photo of it all installed. It's nice sunny weather. There's absolutely no wind, so it's hard to tell if the software or anything is working. So the next step was to take out my laptop and look at the data that was going to the internet. So it went well uh, initially, but then I started noticing some strange things. Stuff like getting 600% humidity, getting 2000 uh, meters per second uh, wind speed, and it was a perfectly sunny day outside. Something really didn't add up. What was I was noticing different between the test on my workbench and when I installed it is, I was getting a lot of weird values. So after some digging around, it turned out to be a noise uh, on the serial link between the weather station board and the node MC MCU board that was throwing in random uh, characters into my serial message and totally messing up all my values. So what I ended up doing, <coughs> excuse me, is writing a little method there that checks the data, it checks the right uh, prefix on the message and if there's any bad or crazy values like humidity over 100%, things like that, then I disregard uh, that message. So these messages, as I said, come in once a second, but we only upload to the cloud once a minute. So it's fine just to disregard uh, one of these samples if I end up getting uh, bad data. Unfortunately, because the weather station board is essentially like a black box, and the manufacturer doesn't apply doesn't supply you with the source code, you can't really use any more advanced, advanced features like forward error correction or checksum to better check the data. And the only solution in the end I found was either to write the whole weather station uh, software from scratch or just disregard the sample of data. And because we're getting 60 samples before we're uploading, there's plenty of data around just to disregard a, a bad sample or two and then just up, only upload the good samples. So now on your screen, you are seeing the weather station in action. It was a few days later, the wind had picked up. Uh, sorry for the kind of wind noise, I didn't really cover the microphone. It's just to give you an idea of, of what's it like uh, up there. So the weather station is going away, the wind's blowing. But what you might have noticed in the video is there's a large wall <laughs> right behind it. Unfortunately, I live in a, in a terraced house and one whole side of the street is blocked from all the houses. And because I was only getting started in this whole area of weather stations, I didn't really feel right to stick the, the whole unit on the second story uh, kind of chimney and just to leave it up there. I kind of wanted to bed it in, see if the hardware worked, see if my software worked. And then maybe in the future, I might move it up to the top of the roof so we get better values so the whole 
so one wind direction isn't totally blocked out from the unit my back garden is too small to move the unit further back would still be blocked from one side of all the houses it's a bit of a kind of an urban canyon uh, in these uh, row of uh, old houses so maybe in the future i might put it up on top of the chimney and then get a more accurate full uh, full aspect of wind from all directions and able to get it a bit of better value and not have the houses uh, interact with it so if we jump back to the slides we come to our end, which is some uh, important uh, links to give and some uh, reflections uh, on the projects. So as I said, a better location will give me a bit more uh, accurate uh, data, not being blocked by one side of the house. There's a big problem with where the temperature sensor is housed. Is housed. It's in a plastic box. It doesn't really get the air. It's very sheltered. So although the temperature sensor might say it's 15 degrees outside, when you go outside, it definitely feels colder, so it maybe need a better uh, Stevenson screen to house the temperature humidity sensor and air pressure sensor, so it's get a better real air air temperature at what it is outside and not what it is in the plastic waterproof box. One of the other aspects that should be fixed is the coating itself. Uh, it uses a hard-coated SSL cert that has to be updated every three months. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can't uh, post the, the data securely online, so that should be uh, fixed. And also look at maybe getting better sensors and look at more robust or more, maybe look at calibrated sensors would be a good approach uh, to go. So I have some links here on the, on the, on the screen. One is to a, a more detailed write-up on the TOG uh, website. The other one is to, if you want to check out what the weather is in Crumlin at any time, you can click on that link on Open Sense Map and see what uh, the weather's like in my back garden. And then also there is my Twitter handle, Jeffrey underscore Rowe, if you want to follow along on any projects that I might be up to in the future.